Dominic Baldi Dom Cantorino was a powerful Genovese captain, who was considered one of Vincent Cingiganti's right-hand men. In 1984, it is alleged that Baldi Dom was the victim of an arson attack, when the FBI set fire to his car. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at Genovese Captain Baldi Dom Cantorino and the time when the FBI allegedly torched his car. Dominic Baldi Dom Cantorino was born on the 6th of June 1930. He grew up in Brooklyn, allegedly in the Bensonhurst area. He would eventually, in his later years, own a house just south of Bensonhurst, living at 181 Bay 47th Street. Although based in Brooklyn, Baldi Dom became associated with the Genovese family's famous Greenwich Village crew in Manhattan. Some sources state that this was due to his association with Genovese soldier Frank Frankie Hart Caggiano, although this is unconfirmed. While still an associate, he was known as one of the Greenwich Village crew's four Doms, which comprised of Dominic Dom the Sailor Di Corto, Dominic Fat Dom Alonghi, Dominic Quiet Dom Cirillo, and Dominic Baldi Dom Cantorino. It is said that Cantorino became the man who oversaw Vincent Giganti's interests in the music industry, where Baldi Dom would work with the notorious Morris Levy. Sources indicate that Dominic Cantorino was formally inducted into the Genovese family in the late 1970s, sometime between 1977 and 1979. In 1980, it is said that Baldi Dom would have some involvement in the murder of Philadelphia conciliary Antonio Tony Bananas Caponegro. Caponegro, famously manipulated by the Genovese family into having Philadelphia boss Angelo Bruno murdered. Genovese soldier turned informer Vincent Fish Cafaro would testify about Caponegro's demise in 1988. He said, He, Caponegro, had an appointment with the chin. Baldy Dom picked him and the other guy up at the Diamond Exchange on 47th or 48th Street and they banged him out. Vincent Cafaro was quizzed further about this by Senator Nunn. Senator Nunn, did Fat Tony tell you that Baldy Dom's crew actually carried out the hits? Mr. Cafaro, no, he did not tell me they carried out the killing. In my opinion, I would say yes. Interestingly, hitman Joseph Mad Dog Sullivan has also taken credit for the killing of Tony Bananas on behalf of the Genovese family. Anyway, at some point in either 1980 or 1981, Dominic Baldi Dom Cantorino officially took over as captain of the Greenwich Village crew. Baldi Dom was very close with family boss Vincent Chin Giganti, and according to Giganti's daughter, Baldi Dom would often join the Giganti family during the holidays, including Christmas, demonstrating his tightness with the powerful mob boss. In 1984, it is alleged that Baldi Dom accompanied Chin Giganti to a commission meeting. As Genovese soldier Vincent Cafaro recalls in his sworn affidavit, another commission meeting which I did not attend, but which Fat Tony told me about, took place at Bari's, a pizza equipment store near Houston Street in Lower Manhattan. Fat Tony, Tony Ducks and Tom Mix travelled to the meeting together. Tony Ducks Anthony Corallo, was the boss of the Lucchese Brigade. Fat Tony told me that Vince Giganti, Paul Castellano, Baldi Dom, Donny Shax, Jerry Lang and Joe N. Gallo attended this meeting. Donny Shax, Dominic Montemarano, is a capo in the Colombo Brigade. Baldi Dom, Dominic Cantorino, is a capo in the Genovese Brigade. Joe N. Gallo was a consigliere in the Gambino Brigade. 
he told me that the meeting was cut short because Baldy Dom thought he saw an FBI agent outside of Bari's and felt that they had been seen. Everybody at the meeting escaped out a back window. Fat Tony got stuck going out the window and Giganti and Donny Shacks had to push him through the window. When I saw him later back at 116th Street, he was still out of breath over his escape. And so to the arson attack mentioned at the start of the video. On November the 12th, 1984, at around 2 a.m., a group of at least eight FBI agents and two detectives attempted to carry out a plan to install a recording device in Baldy Dom's car, which was parked outside of his Brooklyn home. As one report states, the plan called for agents to take Cantorino's 1984 blue Cadillac to another location and plant an electronic bug and return the car to its original parking spot. To save the parking space until the caddy could be returned, another agent was to put a second car in the spot. The plan went awry when Cantorino looked out his front window and saw his car pull away. Hours later, the car, minus its front seats, would be found ablaze near a fire alarm box in Staten Island. So, what transpired in the early hours of November the 12th, 1984, after Cantorino's Cadillac had been moved by the FBI? And how did it end up on fire? In 1987, three years later, the whole incident would play out in court. The FBI would claim that as soon as they realised that they had been spotted taking Cantorino's car, the agents parked the vehicle a few blocks away on Shaw Parkway and removed the hubcaps to make it look like it had been taken for a joyride. After Baldy Dom had spotted his car being taken, the FBI would claim that Cantorino was picked up by an unidentified man in a black Cadillac who drove Cantorino around the neighbourhood until they spotted the car, stopped and began to search it. By 3 a.m., the agents who had been keeping the two under surveillance left. However, Baldy Dom Cantorino provided a different version of events. He said that after watching his car be stolen, he was then picked up by his son Joseph in an Oldsmobile, not a man in a black caddy. They drove around, finally spotting the car on Shaw Parkway with an unidentified man at the wheel and a car double parked next to it. According to Cantorino, the double parked car sped off. Joseph then rammed the rear of the blue caddy in a vain attempt to stop it, but it sped away, making an illegal turn at the corner to get on the Belt Parkway, going toward the Verrazano Bridge. It was documented in court that Baldy Dom Cantorino and his son Joseph had reported the theft that night to police from the 62nd Precinct. Allegedly unaware that while they were doing so, the vehicle had been found 25 minutes away on Staten Island, and firefighters were putting out flames that had torn through it. Cantorino had the vehicle registered in a friend's name, and this friend would receive a $20,726 insurance check. Baldy Dom then purchased a 1985 Cadillac and again registered it in his friend's name. On Christmas Eve 1986, two years later, Baldy Dom Cantorino was arrested on charges of torching his own car to collect the insurance money. At the start of 1987, at the trial relating to this, it was reported, In his opening statement to the jury, Prosecutor Andrew McCarthy said once the agents realised Cantorino had seen them take the car, they aborted their mission and left it several blocks away where Cantorino found it and heard opportunity knocking. So he and a few helpers concocted a scheme, McCarthy said. The blue Cadillac was driven to Staten Island and burned, and a fairy tale was contrived about how it was stolen. However, in court, things didn't go according to plan for the prosecution. Manhattan Federal Court Judge John Sprizzo, who presided over the case against Baldy Dom, took a different view on the events that were laid out by the prosecution and the federal agents. As mentioned earlier, the plan on the night of the failed bugging of Cantorino's car was to have another vehicle placed in its parking spot 
whilst it was taken away to have a listening device installed. However, no car was put in place and the FBI agent who was responsible for that part of the plan testified on the stand more than 50 times that he couldn't recall the events of that night. Other federal agents also failed to do themselves justice on the stand during this trial, leading Judge Sprizzo to say, I sit here as a judge and I can tell you it is very hard for me, as reluctant as I am to find agents not telling the truth willfully, to find any other innocent explanation for his testimony. I'm really trying not to draw that inference of willful perjury, but it is becoming harder and harder for me not to draw it. Interestingly, when Baldy Dom Cantorino's car was found torched on Staten Island, the front two seats had been taken out. This information also made the judge suspicious. It was reported, The judge also questioned why anyone involved in an insurance scam would remove the front seats before torching the car. There were a few other discrepancies in the prosecution's case that the judge questioned and ultimately he acquitted Dominic Cantorino of insurance fraud. As was reported, The question of who torched the car came before a federal court and this month Manhattan Federal Court Judge John Sprizzo decided it wasn't Cantorino as the government charged but probably the FBI agents themselves. In 1988, Baldy Dom and Morris Levy were hit with extortion charges relating to the music industry and Cantorino was sentenced to 12 years in prison. However, after serving just one year, Baldy Dom was released pending an appeal on his sentence. On May 31st, 1990, whilst out on bail from prison, Baldy Dom was indicted in the famous Windows case. But after suffering a heart attack, he was dropped from the case. Dominic Baldi Dom Cantorino, the right-hand man to Vincent Cingiganti, would die that June in 1990. He was 61 years of age. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.